CNBC said that Carl Icahn was buying into FCX. Um, you know, it's kind of funny. I was talk, I was looking at these guys last week, and they have just gotten demolished. Um, I used to trade these guys quite a bit, and if you look at FC, now this is a gold mining stock, okay? Uh, a mining stock. Uh, how how are any of the miners doing? Yeah, they're not doing well, right? I mean, now is not a good time to be in the mining industry of anything. Gold has been depressed as a metal, so it, it drives demand down. Uh, that drives prices down. That drives profits down. And so stocks like FCX have just gotten crushed here. Now you got people like Carl Icahn who are coming in and buying in to stocks like FCX. Okay. Now Carl Icahn, he's doing okay for himself. Guy's got billions of dollars. All right, he's done more than all right for himself. He knows the market. Why would somebody like Carl Icahn be buying into a stock like FCX? Retracement. Carl Carl uses options very very well in his trading, but he's basically a value investor. Right? He likes to acquire stocks at a discount, and then he likes to hang on to them and sell them. Right? But he uses options to acquire. So when he's done something like that, uh, what are we seeing fundamentally that would cause somebody like Carl Icahn to want to come in and take a position in the market here, in, the, in this stock, in the gold miners? They're down a lot, all right, so there's a value in there. Uh, they're they're down trading around eight dollars a share now at ten, so there's value there. That that's one reason. But why is there value there? What's going on? The price of gold may be headed higher. If gold goes up, the profits of selling gold go up. The demand for mining gold goes up. Companies like FCX are are now called out to do a bunch of mining of gold. Why would the price of gold go up? as a hedge against market uncertainty. As the market starts to go lower, the price of gold starts to go higher. As the dollar starts to go uh, lower, the price of gold goes higher as a hedge against it. Are we in uncertain times in the market right now? Worldwide, is the market starting to become pretty shaky? Yeah. So does it make sense that gold would be a place to go look for investment? It might. Carl Icahn taking a position here. Now, I haven't looked into it, but I will, uh, I will talk to, uh, I will do a little bit of research here. My guess is that if Carl Icahn took a position on FCX, and we'll go look here in a minute, he did not buy the stock. He does not just go in and buy the stock. How many of you guys remember the Herbalife trade? Anybody remember Herbalife? Carl Icahn went in there and he bought Herbalife, didn't he? No, he didn't. He sold put options on Herbalife and used those put options to finance the purchase of call options. He sold an option to the market maker that gives the market maker the right to force him to buy a stock he wanted to buy anyway at a lower price. They paid him to do it. He took that money and went out and bought contracts that gave him the right to buy the stock from the market maker at a certain price whenever he wanted to do it. It's called a risk reversal and it is a version of the synthetic long that we do here. Let's go see if maybe by chance in the February 2017, I'm sorry, February 2016s and the January 2017s is where I'm looking. I'm going to go in and look and see if there's not some unusually high open interest on these strike prices and see if there's not a place where uh, somebody might have come in and sold uh, 13,000 of the January of uh, the uh, February 13 put option and used that to purchase 6,000 of the 11 call options. Okay, so there's a possibility there. I'm just looking here to see if I see Carl Icahn hiding in the option chain anywhere. Let's see if he's in here. I mean, that guy, he's pretty, he's pretty, oh, here we go. There we go. Right in here, look at this. Uh, apparently, Carl Icahn wasn't the only one. Good grief. 19,000 
puts on the uh, this is on the January 2017 10 put options 19,000 of those uh, there's 18,000 of the eight put uh, that have open interest and then you go out of the money to the uh, 18 call option uh, there's 13,000 of those 10,000 of the 20 call options so it looks to me like uh, Carl Icahn may not be the only one who's interested in FCX. We'll just put it that way. Well, when this kind of thing happens, we maybe we should take a look at it too. What do you guys think? Yeah. 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 So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, we will go in, guys. Those of you in the lab, we'll go in. We'll start evaluating this. I need to do a little bit more research. See what kind of structures some of the big institutions may be looking at on FCX. I do like the chart. I like it from a fundamental perspective. It makes sense as the market is selling off. Uh, you guys in the lab know for the last couple of uh, times we've been together, I've been talking about the possibility of taking a position in gold because if the market does sell off and it makes sense for us to take a position, the problem with taking a position in physical gold or one of the ETFs is that you're directly linked to the price of gold. The miners create a, almost a second derivative trade which gives you some cushion, some slippage there, if you will. So if the price of gold drops, the price of the gold miners does not immediately drop. It tends to follow it. Does that make sense? And so we've got a little cushion in there because if, if long-term demand for gold is bullish, in other words, the market's saying, man, uh, we better start loading up on some gold over the next year or two, then you're going to see the miners need to ramp up very quickly to meet that demand. So I like this as a second derivative trade. I like the, the concept. I like the idea because it literally brings to the front exactly what we've talked about here. If you are in a group of like-minded individuals, you will see far more than you could ever see by yourself. Okay, there's a reason that the antelopes run in a herd. So everybody's got an eye out for the lion, right? Does that make sense? And that's what's going on on here. If it's just one antelope, he's an easy meal. If it's a herd out there, we're working together, we can stay safe and, and, and look for opportunities. I like this as a potential opportunity. I like the investing thesis on it. I like the idea of going long term on it. Um, I also like, I don't know if you guys know this or not, option pricing on it is, is not expensive at all. Right now we could go in, just to give you guys an idea, doing the 13, <laughs> I may not be able to resist the temptation, <laughs> doing the 13 synthetic long for January 2017, they are going to pay us $2.35 to do that trade. The market will pay me over $2 to take a long exposure to FCX that does not expire. And to, I can't resist that. I mean, I just, I'm sorry. We're just going to have to do it. We're doing the 13s. So here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to go and we're going to sell the Janu uh, January 2017 13 put option for $4.65. We'll put that into our synthetic long, our long positions account, uh, demo account number five. I'm going to sell the 13 put for $4.65. They paid me $4.65 to sell that put. Now I've got a naked put, which is fine because if the stock is below 13 at expiration, I get to buy the stock. For 13 minus the four dollars and sixty five cents they sold me uh, that, that I sold them, but I've only got like a I mean the delta on this is 44. That sucks. And the thing is, if the stock does rocket higher, the most I can make on this trade is four dollars and sixty five cents. I can't ever make more than four sixty five on this. I hate that. I hate that about selling a put. I sold them four sixty five. If the stock goes up twenty dollars, I'm only going to make four sixty five. I don't like that. And in the beginning of the trade, I'm only going to make 44 cents for every dollar that the stock moves up. I don't like that either. I'm going to go buy a call option is what I'm going to do. Because if I buy a call option, now if the stock goes up $20, I might make 16 of that dollars, right? Because obviously I'm buying a low delta option, but at least there's an unlimited profit potential on the call. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to buy the January 2017 13 call option and I'm going to buy that for $2.36. They paid me $4.65. I'm paying them $2.36.
What's the difference between those two? About two dollars and thirty cents. Now check this out. I sold a put with a forty-four delta. I bought a call with a fifty-six delta. Now I'm not all that good at math, but I can figure that one out. It's a hundred delta. I have just synthetically duplicated owning the stock, having the advantages of owning the stock. Dollar for dollar, this option position will go up from the very first minute of the trade to the very last minute of the trade with one delta to the stock price. Stock goes up a dollar, I make a dollar. Stock goes up ten dollars, I make ten dollars. From the very beginning to the very end. Oh, and by the way, they paid me two dollars and thirty cents to do the trade, which means if this stock goes against two dollars and thirty cents, I will get out and lose nothing. What's the margin requirement on this? It's exactly the same margin requirement that it would be for selling any naked put, which with Tradier is 25% of the strike price plus whatever premium you brought in. Let me do some math. You'll notice the pause while I'm doing math because I'm not doing math, I'm doing calculations on a calculator. Okay, thirteen dollars uh, a share times 0.25 uh, is three dollars and twenty-five cents. Oh, but we brought in four sixty-five. Our margin requirement in a Reg T margin account is seven dollars and ninety cents. You need to have seven dollars and ninety cents to be able to do this trade in your account per share. Seven ninety per share. Okay, is what you have to have in margin. Okay. 790. Okay. Now if you were going to buy the stock, you would have to have uh, $10.60 to buy the stock. So this is a cheaper way to buy the stock without buying the stock. And the problem with buying the stock is if I buy the stock at $10.60 and it drops down $2.30 to $8.30, I will lose $2.30. Yes? If I buy the stock at 10 and I sell it at 8, I lose $2. I know. I tried it twice, just to check. I will lose money if I buy the stock. But in this position, in this option position, which is a Carl Icahn style of trading, this is a risk reversal done at the money called a synthetic long, I can have this trade go against me the $2, get out, and not lose money on the trade. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, and by the way, we can sell covered calls on FCX every single week from now until January of 2017.